Next heat treatment is the surface hardening. That is the cyanidic method. So similar to carbon nitriding, cyanidic also involves the diffusion of carbon and nitrogen into the surface of steel. It is also called liquid carbon nitriding. The components are heated to the temperature above 800 to 900 degrees Celsius in the molten cyanide bath consisting of sodium cyanide. sodium carbonate and sodium chloride after allowing the component in the bath for about 15 to 20 minutes they are quenched in a oil or water cyaniding is normally used for low carbon steel and case dip are usually less than 0.25 mm it produces a hard and wear resistant surface on the steels because of the shortened time cycle the process is widely used for the machine components subjected to the moderate wear and service loads the process is particularly suitable for screw small gears nuts and bolts so this is the salt bath used in the cyaniding method for the surface treatment next is the reaction through the cyaniding process occurred so cyaniding is applicable for steel with 0.3 to 0.4 percent carbon surface hardened by addition of the addition of the carbon and nitrogen the process includes uh, the medium that is a parts immersed in liquid bath containing the sodium cyanide varying between 25 percent to 90 percent then bath heated in the range of 800 to 960 degrees celsius temperature then measured amount of air passed through the molten bath so next is the reactions occurred in the cyaniding process so it will be the twice nacn plus o2 which will give two times nacno then second reaction is two times nacno plus o2 it will give sodium hydroxide not hydroxide sodium carbonate that is na2co3 plus this will give you na2co3 that is a sodium carbonate then carbon monoxide co and two nitrogen atoms or molecule then third reaction is a two co that is carbon monoxide which will give the carbon dioxide and carbon so the carbon and n2 so forms diffuse into the steel and give the thin wear resistance layer of car carbon nitriding phase so this is the nitrogen and this is the carbon this will uh, be act on the surface of the metal then next step is a quenched in oil or water so this is the quenching process so oil or water is used as a quenching medium next uh, the low temperature tempering is carried out then cyaniding time of 1.5 to 6 hours for case depth of 0.13 to 0.35 mm at 850 degrees celsius temperature then higher the temperature higher the carbon diffusion that is a 0.8 to 1.2% on surface as compared to nitrogen So 0.2 to 0.3 percent is the nitrogen. So the case hardness is achieved as a 850 VHN, that is Vickers hardness number. So after cyaniding process, the case hardening that is will be the surface hardness is achieved will be equal to 850 VHN. Advantages and disadvantages of cyaniding process. comparison with carburizing process the first advantage is uh, it is a uh, less time consuming then less distortion due to the use of salt bath the next uh, disadvantage is that it is not suitable for a component subjected to shock fatigue and impact 
because nitrogen has adverse effect on the these properties next is the difference between cyanating and liquid carburizing the absence of alkalines earth salt in cyanating high percentage of nacn in case of cyanating high nitrogen and lower carbon in case hardening cyanating in cases in the case of cyanating so this is the difference of between cyanating and liquid carburizing the next is a carbonitriding so it is also known as a dry cyanating gas cyanating and nicarbonic it is applicable for the steel with 0.3 to 0.4% carbon surface hardened by addition by addition of the carbon and nitrogen carbonitriding is used to improve the wear resistance of mild steel and low alloy steel the process includes the medium used is a gas mixture consisting of 15% nitrogen and 5% ch4 methane 80% natural carrier gas then heating in the range of 800 to 870 degree celsius temperature then carbon and nitrogen diffuses into the steel the quenching media is oil to avoid the cracking then the tempering temperature is 150 degree to 180 degree celsius then case depth is a 0.05 to 0.75 mm that is the surface depth then hardness achieved for after the carbon nitriding will be equal to 850 wicker hardness number so here nitrogen is more effective in increasing the hardenability as compared to the carbon nitrogen content depends upon ammonia and temperature the advantages of carbon nitriding the it will uh, increase the surface hardenability wear resistance and corrosion resistance better than the carburizing disadvantage of carbon nitriding is that it uh, takes a longer time than carburizing process next is a flame hardening so these are the types of the surface hardening case hardening that is carburizing cyanating that is a carbon nitriding and flame hardening that is a by using the heating flame the hardening is provided for the surface so case hardening is nothing but the primary purpose of case hardening is to produce a surface which is a resistance to wear while maintaining the overall toughness and strength of the steel core normally used on a steel with a low carbon content and introduces the carbon by diffusion that is a carburizing into the local surface requiring treatment heating steel in the presence of solid liquid or gas rich in the carbon so in flame hardening heating the surface being hardened above the upper critical temperature with the oxyacetylene flame before quenching it in the spray of the water this is the surface hardening process resulting in the hard surface layer of about 2 mm to 6 mm deep next is a tempering heat treatment a tempering heat treatment sorry at tempering temperature carbon atoms diffuses out and form a fine cementite and softer ferrite structure left behind thus the structure of tempered steel consists of ferrite and fine cementite thus the tempering allows to precipitate carbon as very fine carbide and allow the microstructure to return to vcc so the temperatures are related to the function of the part cutting tools are tempered about 230 to 300 degree celsius temperature if greater ductility and toughness are desired as in case of the shaft and high strength bolts the steel is tempered in the range of 300 to 600 degree celsius then in diagram you will see the tough microstructure of the after tempering and tempered microstructure is as shown in the figure 2 next is the difference between the mat tempering and os tempering so the mat tempering is a hardening treatment where os tempering is not a hardening treatment mat tempering gives martensite product os tempering gives bainite product 
then more distortion and quenching cracks in martinet print while less distortion and quenching cracks there in os tempering tempering is needed after mart tempering in mart tempering and tempering is not needed after os tempering then for mart tempering it required less time for the process in os tempering it will require more time for the process mart tempering provide the low ductility and toughness while os tempering provides the good ductility or great ductility and toughness so this is the comparison or difference between the mart tempering and os tempering next is a heat treatment in the non ferrous metals that is a precipitation hardening so the process in this process solution treatment in which the alloy is heated to a temperature above the solvers line into the alpha phase and held for a period of sufficient time to dissolve the beta phase quenching to room temperature to create a super saturated solid solution so precipitation treatment alloy is heated to a temperature below ts to cause the precipitation of the fine particles of beta phase in this diagram so there will be the solution heat treatment after that quenching is carried out and further precipitation heat treatment is shown so this is again the diagram which shows the precipitation hardening heat treatment for non ferrous metals so effect of aging heat treatment time on the strength of aluminum alloy so the operator of the furnace left for his our lunch break without removing the aluminum with the 4% of copper alloy from the furnace used for the aging treatment so compared the effect of the yield strength of extra hours or aging for the aging temperature 192 260 degrees celsius so here yield strength will going to vary because of this aging time or whenever there is extra time for the heat treatment so there will be the effect clearly see the effect of the on the yield strength so for 260 degree celsius yield strength is uh, quite less for 190 degree it will goes on reducing gpi1 gpi2 then 150 degree celsius again it will more and if the temperature is less so that is 107 degree celsius then it will have the increasing the yield strength in gradual manner so thank you for the watching heat treatment of the steel